we're talking about a pretty, maybe controversial pen. Controversial because some people love it, some people hate it, some people think they're overpriced. They are overpriced. Um, but some people still love them or hate them. The pen in question is this. It is the Mont Blanc Meisterstück Le Grand Platinum Traveler's Fountain Pen. Wow, way too long of a name. Um, it's the 147, which means it is a cartridge filler, not the piston filler that the 146 is. Um, so there's a lot going on here. I purchased this from La Couronne de Comte. I thought it'd be really interesting because I wanted to just see how it stacks up to my piston filler 146. And also I really wanted a double broad nib because I have problems. But anyway, we're gonna talk about this pen, we're gonna look at it, and I will just give you my thoughts on it. I, I'm curious to know what you guys think. Love it or hate it? Too expensive, probably, but very pretty. Let me know what you think. Check it on. We're going to watch. I mean, we're going to play with it. And then, I don't know. I'm going to just stop talking now. Okay, bye. The fun stuff. We begin with the very recognizable La Couronne du Comte wrapping paper. It's very pretty. And I do try to save it because it's just very pretty. Um, I already opened it because I couldn't wait and I've been using it. So I save this to share with you. It also has a ribbon that is also very attractive. Very lovely presentation, makes for a fantastic gift if you're gifting it to someone else, and it makes for a fantastic self-gift if you're gifting it to yourself. So this is the standard Mont Blanc, like regular series packaging. It is shockingly, not as ostentatious as you would expect or might expect from Mont Blanc. Um, there is the, okay, so you have the sleeve, you have the box, and it's a very simple box. It's got a nice squishy bed for your pen. So it's actually super protected and the pen doesn't roll around. I prefer this to the box that they have for the larger pens where it's, um, sometimes you just stick it through a loop. So I prefer this setup. And it's not excessive, shockingly, again, from Mont Blanc. You get your little service guide, which I always recommend flipping through, even if you're a new user, because there's just stuff that you might not think of, you might not realize, you might not know, and it's just good to have. So uh, that's just my, my little service thing, uh, like caring for your instrument. You might know all the stuff already, but you know, just in case you don't, I think it's worth taking a look at. So let's move the packaging. Let's look at the pen. That's what we're all here for. We're here for the pen. This is the Mont Blanc Meisterstück Le Grand Traveler Platinum Fountain Pen. It's a mouthful. Basically, it is the 146, but they call it the 147. Well, we call it the 147. If you're looking online and stuff, that's what you'll see it as. And the 147 means it's not a piston filler. So you probably know that, but if you don't, that's what it is. It's not a piston filler. So let's look at it. Let's just go over its bits. It's very um, simple. Like it's very plain. It's not in a bad way. I like it. Uh, it's black precious resin and platinum trim. So what exactly does that mean? <clears throat> it's a black plastic pen, of course. I'm not judging. I have a lot of Mont Blancs because I like the nibs. But what I can say is that the precious resin has something to it. In the right light, I'm trying to show you. I don't know if you can see it, but the resin glows like a deep red. And it's almost like you have a really dark black ink and it has a, a red sheen to it. So that's what it looks like. It's very interesting, and it's one of the ways that you could tell that you have an authentic Mont Blanc. Other than that, you know, you have the, the snow cap, the um, clip ring has your serial number on it, 
This particular clip says made in Germany on the underside. Sometimes they say picks. It depends on what year you have. Um, the center band is Montblanc Meisterstück. Other than that, it's like it's a very plain pen. I like it. Like I personally, I think it's elegant. But there are, of course, other black pens with gold or platinum trim that are also elegant. But I just wanted this particularly because of the nib. So this is a double broad nib and I'm going to show you all the details. I think it's actually showing up pretty well. So it has a single slit round breather hole, 4810. It's got the Mont Blanc logo, the gold hallmark and plastic feed. Double broad for Mont Blanc is a little bit stubby, which I'll show you. And the, it's no longer a piston turning knob. It's an uncapping knob. So let's uncap. And out slides your convert, um, cartridge converter setup. So it's not a converter. What it is, is it holds your cartridge in place and then you have a second cartridge for when your other one runs out. Pretty simple system, pretty easy to clean. You could just plunge some water through there. I have been using these Mont Blanc pink cartridges that I had and like burning through them because a the double broad nib. But anyway, it's very nice in that some people just don't want a piston. You know, it's just easier than a piston. Maybe you just prefer cartridges. Um, I'm kind of, I'm okay with the pistons, but you know, indeed, sometimes you just don't want a piston. And I had these Mont Blanc pink cartridges that I also wanted to use. So it has been working for me. Now in terms of the pen. So the 146 is actually my favorite size. I do have the 149. And I can work with the 149, but this one suits me really well. So the one, for, what I say the 146, it's also the 147, right? Same size. In hand, super comfortable. All of this is smooth. There's no issues for me. I don't have, like, my fingers don't slip. I mean, I bought the pen, so obviously I like it. Obviously I like its features. It's really, I mean, it's a very light pen, so I find it very comfortable. Um, just trying to find, it's pretty well balanced. And, and I say pretty well balanced, I mean it is balanced. It does post, should you be a poster. It does not make it super back heavy. It just shifts the weight a little bit towards the back, but perfectly fine, perfectly usable for me. I can actually use this posted. I just prefer to use my pens unposted. So that's what I do. In terms of the comparison to the other ones, right? So we've got the, <clears throat> let me just pull this out here. I have these, these are the, the other ones. So the other ones are, this is the 147. This is the one, oh, maybe I should put it like this. It does, Isa. 146, 147, 149. There are other sizes this way, but we're just gonna look at these. The 146 is the piston filler. This is the gold trim. This is the 147 cartridge filler with the platinum trim. And this is the 149 also piston filler with gold trim. But, Wait, yeah, this is the gold trim. I wanted to grab my, uh, one sec, I'll be quick. This is the 149 with the rose gold trim. So let's do this, just so you can see the trim difference. The, these are the two that are very similar. They are different, I can see the difference. It's kind of hard to show on camera. This one needs polishing for sure, but the Platinum is very beautiful. I really like it. So let's do, let's show you this. I don't want to do pictures and stuff of it. Like I just, I want to enjoy the review that I'm doing too, right? Like I want to have fun. So this is what I'm going to do. You're going to have to deal with it. Deal with it with me. So the 146 and 147 are in essence the same size. You're not going to notice the difference. This is obviously larger. We're not really worried about the size there. So 
let's post these two. Same size. Oh, sorry. Same size. So in case you're wondering, like, oh, I like the 146 with the piston, but I don't really want a piston, but I don't want a smaller pen because I really like the size of it, you're good to go with the 147. Same size, you're not going to have any issues. So there we go. Anyway, that has been a long, terribly winded, horrendous discussion about what the pen is. The pen, just for your nose... The pen, I'm going to do this in euros because I bought this at La Courant de Comte. Um, this is without VAT. So you're looking at, in this order, 504 euros, 508 euros for the regular. This is obviously a Bordeaux, but if you were to get the black with platinum trim, so it's comparable, you're basically looking at 4 euros more. And the 149 is like 665 plus, right? So is the value there? I mean, a lot of people don't care for Mont Blanc because they find them overpriced. I'm not going to argue with you. They are overpriced, but I still like them because I really like the nib options. So <clears throat> if you're looking for value, you're not going to spend a lot less with the 146 just because it's a cartridge system. They're basically the same price. Is that silly? Absolutely. But, you know, if you really want it, because you enjoy the size or you want to, you just enjoy it, you like the nib options, then it's worth it. You know, if it makes you happy, it's worth it. So let's do some writing. Let's do it this way. I'm going to pull my sleeve down so I don't grease up the page further than I already have. Um, let's, let's zoom in a little, shall we? Move that there. Okay, so as I said, I picked the double broad. Um, okay, so I was going to do a cute font or font, a cute script, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to write Mont Blanc. Meister Stuck. It is the such a ridiculous amount of names. Le Grand. Uh, I'm going to just put them all just so you know. 147. Traveler. <sighs> Platinum. And I have the double broad nib. I absolutely love the fact that Mont Blanc gives you the options. You can get extra fine, fine, medium broad, double broad, oblique medium, oblique broad, or you can go wild and go bespoke. Is it expensive? Sure. Sure, the bespoke is expensive. But I really enjoy it. I really love my double broad. I love my oblique double broad. They make me happy. So... This is a bit of a drier ink, but it's still... The, the ink flow is quite sufficient. Um, it is the Mont Blanc Pink from back then, way back when. Mont Blanc Pink. And we are using the Rhodia dot pad, just in case you're wondering. Maybe you're not. Now, what I can tell you is, in my experience for Mont Blanc, the tines are usually quite tight. So I've been using this as is for some time now, but I am going to have it wetened to my taste. But I mean, I think out of the box, it'll make most people happy. So the stubbiness is pretty, con okay, sorry, that was my fault. It's pretty consistent in terms of the angle. It doesn't really matter what angle you're at, you're still gonna get the same stubbiness. That's all me. I'm sorry. So this skipping is because it's too dry. It's not because it is poorly polished. It's just too dry. And that's why I want to get it nimbistered. Does that mean it's not writing out of the box? No. What it means, it's not writing the way I like it. Because I like it super wet. 
and the let me see here how can I explain this would I send this to someone as a gift I would I would I mean in the past I have always worried would it be over polished I have ordered and used quite a few double broads from Montblanc and they've all written without issue they've just been tight tines because I think they're adjusted to just not be gushers I mean I guess most people don't want gushers I do can you do anything with the, the reverse of the stub um you can it's super sharp I wouldn't I wouldn't enjoy it, but it definitely gives you a very crisp, dry line. Gross. Not into that. I really enjoy these stubby Montblancs because they're, um, like, they give me a little bit of stubbiness for calligraphy practice. And it's not, it's it's almost like it's, it's um, like a cursive stub. It's not super crisp. Anyway, long story short, I really wanted one, so I ordered one, and I got one. Why did I want one? Because I have a thing for broad nibs, and I just, you know what? I just wanted one. Is that okay? I just wanted one. Is that all right with you? Anyway, uh, sorry. Another reason is because I wanted a canvas to possibly have customized by Bocamundo. And I figured, why not have a great nib on it? In terms of line variation, no. I'm applying pressure there and all that happens is it just dries out. But because it's a stub, you will get natural line variation. Uh, you get broad downstrokes and thinner cross strokes. It's not super crisp variation, but it's there. I think it's quite decent if you just want something fun. Free weight. It does miraculously free weight. So even though it is on the dry side, it is free weighting. Yay! Okay, enough of that. Let's check out a different angle just so you can see the side of the nib. And then we'll come back. There is that. You have seen it. You have heard it here at Gourmet Pens. Thank you so much for watching. If you would like, you can visit La Couronne de Comte. Unfortunately, Mont Blanc doesn't allow discount codes, but you can use my discount code for other things. See, I'm applying pressure. Ugh, oh, awful. Anyway, this will go off to Toronto Pen Company for whatening. A lot of people want to know, is the Mont Blanc line worth it? If it makes you happy, it's worth it. And that's all there is to it. Thanks again, everyone. I hope this was helpful. Drop your thoughts in the comments. I am dying to know whether you love it or hate it. I suspect there's going to be a lot of hate, and that's okay. I love it, and it makes me happy. So that's everything. We'll see you next time. <laughs>